Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're anything like me and have been getting a little burnt out of squad from the lack of teamwork or the constantly delayed updates, then you might be looking around for a new shooter to play. For me, I thought that Battlefield 2042, while it doesn't offer much in regards to teamwork, would still at least be an enjoyable shooter to inject some excitement back into me, but unfortunately, it left me longing for so much more. Well, luckily for us, World War 3 has just released their game into open beta and you can pick yourself up a copy for as little as 15 bucks. Now, this game first released back in 2018 and was an absolute dumpster fire to the point where they removed it from the Steam store while they made some much needed changes. I honestly did not expect to buy this game at all, much less to actually enjoy it. From what I had seen previously, it just looked pretty meh in comparison to the usual games I play, and the fact that it had already failed once before gave me the impression that the second go around would not be much better. To my surprise and delight, the game is a blast. There are some issues, and I'll present those later in the video, but for now, I just wanted to sit back and talk about the things that World War 3 does really well and why it may be worth checking out for yourself. The first and largest thing I wanted to touch on, since I know who my audience is, is the teamwork and communication found in World War III. On one hand, if you play solo, you can for the most part write off any chance of your teammates actually working with you. Yes, you might get the odd ammo or med bag from them, but besides that, you're flying solo. Now, on the other hand, grab one or more friends and the true potential of this game is unlocked. Even just playing with one other person, I went from dying left, right, and center to being able to dominate the competition. If you're used to playing a game like Squad, you can transition seamlessly into World War III and outplay the enemy team by merely staying close to your squad. Everyone else in this game runs from one objective to the next like headless chickens, so having even a sliver of coordination turns you into a damn raid boss. World War III has both a squad order system and a ping system, so your squad leader can assign the squad an attack or defend order, of which you'll gain increased XP for carrying out. The ping system allows you to throw out a marker to bring attention to an area for your fellow squad mates, so if you're playing without a mic, you'll still be able to communicate at a basic level. Another aspect of World War III that leans more into the cooperation between you and your squad or team is the ammo and health system. While you can regenerate health in this game, you do so at a painfully slow speed, so getting a med bag is vital. And instead of the battlefield system where people can spam their med and ammo bags like crazy, this game has a much more strict system. For example, the health bags have a total of 200 healing points that anyone can use, so if you throw it down for you and your squad mate that are close to death and use up 150 points of it, it will only be left with 50 for the next person. Awesome math skills, I know. But with this and the cooldown on these bags, you're forced to rely more on teammates instead of always flying solo. And a cool little side note, you can take health and ammo from enemy bags, not just friendly ones. Now, unfortunately, there is no revive system in this game, but the way the spawn system works also encourages a base level of teamwork. When you do go down, you can spawn at main, one of the fully captured flags, or on one of your squad mates if they aren't in combat. So while yes, you can't pick up your down buddy, by you staying close and eliminating the enemy that took him out, your squad mates can now spawn right back next to you. While this is a far more arcadey spawn system that you may be used to, it actually does a great job at giving you and your squad the opportunity and encouragement to stick together, and like we mentioned before, when you play as a unit in this game, you turn into a borderline cheat code. Lastly, on the teamwork aspects, World War III does have a point streak system where you can call in a missile strike or spawn in a vehicle once you've accrued enough. I will say, I haven't felt overwhelmed by all the call-ins like you would in a Call of Duty game. In regards to the point system, you gain substantially more points from capturing objectives than you do for merely running around and killing things. So while yes, people will just run around and shoot all game, you and your squad can gain the upper hand by capturing and holding the different flags. Next up, I wanted to take a look at the gunplay and some of the unique elements World War III uses to create an enjoyable shooter. The gunplay itself, from what I've played so far, is really fun. The recoil feels a bit odd at times, but your overall skill with the weapon in your hands can make or break each gunfight you get into. The balance between different classes of weapons is actually noticeable. SMGs will dominate at close range, but get obliterated by anyone with a rifle at medium to long range. The time to kill is fast, but with a caveat. You can customize your character to be equipped with different tiers of body armor and helmets. The higher the tier, the better the protection, but also lowers your mobility. 
If an enemy shoots you in the torso where your plates are located, those shots will do decreased damage to the player and instead wear down the overall durability of the armor. This forces you to think about where you're aiming and prioritize headshots or shooting where there is no armor. And speaking of headshots, your helmet in World War 3 actually serves a purpose. From what I've seen, your helmet, depending on the armor class, can lessen the incoming damage of rounds until it has no hit points left where it will fly off your head, leaving that big old grape completely exposed. And since there seems to be such an increased importance on shot placement, you also get to see where the enemy's rounds hit you when you do eventually get put down, accompanied by how much health your enemy had left. So now, no more complaining about why you're losing gunfights. You lost because they clicked on your head while you were too busy tickling at their ankles with your rounds. Now, I've played close to 2,500 hours in squad, and while customization and unlocks have never been a huge thing for me, World War III has done a good job of creating a rewarding progression system. You can level up your character to gain access to new kits and weapons, and you can level up individual weapons to unlock more and better attachments for your favorite guns. Not that a progression system is the end-all be-all, but it does add a new aspect of enjoyment for me that I haven't experienced much in gaming as of late. The last thing I wanted to touch on in the positive column is the performance. I probably need to do a bit more testing and tweaking with my settings, but in all my time playing thus far, I haven't dropped below 100 FPS. I'm currently running on an i9 9900K and a 1070Ti with my graphics settings set to a mixture of high to ultra. So if you've been struggling to run squad or get much more than 60 FPS out of it, you're gonna be quite pleased with how well this game runs on your PC. To round out the video, I did want to touch on some of the negatives that stood out to me while playing thus far. The first is ditch whatever sidearm you have and get yourself an anti-tank launcher because vehicles run rampant in World War III. They aren't unbelievably tanky, so as long as you have a couple others around you, you can dispatch vehicles quickly. That is, of course, if you can hit them. I know this game leans more towards the arcade shooter, but good lord do the vehicles have some insane acceleration. Trying to hit an AT shot from further than 30 meters is a nightmare because Vix can just go back and forth with little to no movement penalty. Next, while the gunplay in World War 3 is good, the audio is a whole nother story. From one game where I had no weapon audio, to some players having no footstep audio, to just the overall meh sound of the wide array of weapons in the game, the sound design really needs some attention. Lastly, and the most annoying thing by far, was the matchmaking system, and more specifically, the party system. While playing alone, I had little to no problems getting into games, but the second others joined my party, it was a bit of a nightmare. Some people would get kicked, while others would get put into a game. Sometimes only one player would get in, and other times the whole party would get disbanded. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the system, but it's one thing that if taken too long to fix, it's going to turn a lot of people off from the game. As a possible fix for those that may be having matchmaking problems when in a party, we found that once the party leader searches for a game, do not enter any of the menus. Don't try to customize a weapon or check out your career stats. Just keep your hands away from your mouse and keyboard to prevent you from being tempted to open a menu. Doing this, we had far less issues getting into a game with one another. Additionally, within the time it took me to make this video, the development team has put out a message addressing many of the issues I just listed and has said that they hope to have some ironed out by the end of the week. This is a beta, so problems can be expected, but it is refreshing to see the development team recognizing the problems and giving the players a date they can expect to see some of these problems resolved. All in all, it is a really fun game. Just while typing out the script for this game right now, I genuinely want to jump back in and play some more, which is an eagerness I haven't felt in some time. For the price, I don't think you can go wrong. It seems like the development team is back on track, and this game could possibly be a staple in the shooter genre moving forward. While some people may play World War III like any other Battlefield game, it has the framework set up to be played like a tactical shooter. Yes, movement speed is a tad fast, but the fast TTK and benefits of working together with your squad present a really interesting opportunity for those of us that want to play games slower and with an increased element of realism. You'll definitely be seeing more World War III from me on this channel in the forms of guides and tactics videos to help both new and returning viewers enjoy a better and more tactical gameplay experience. If you enjoyed today's video, leave it a like and subscribe for more future World War III content. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, I'm out.